Welcome to Eagle Live. What a break from Manoa. Interviewing your favorite USA Eagles around the globe. Tony Lambeau into the 22. Now, here's your host, Bill Baker. Hello, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share with your friends, family, kids, parents, co-workers, anybody. All right, today's show features USA fly half and extra chief center, Gabby Cantorna. We recorded this late last week prior to their dismantling of DMP Sharks, 76-5. to Now, it was a big game for each of our Eagles in that match. Gabby had a try, 16 points from the tee. You know, Kate Zachary has another had a try, I think that's seven on the season for her. Uh, JoJo got into the game pretty late, and a big first start for Rachel Johnson with two tries of her own. Uh, I think you can still watch the match. You need to get onto the Extra Chiefs YouTube page and uh, give it a watch. It's a good one. All right, on to the interview. Gabby and I have a really good conversation about how the team has been really starting to mold together and improve together, getting to know each other on and off the field. Uh, we go into her kicking game, you know, what she's been doing, you know, how much training she's doing to make that better, and it's been a big part of their victory so far, a big, big part of their success. And we talk about what it would mean to pull on a USA jersey in a World Cup match. Now, it's sad to say this now, news came out yesterday that World Rugby has recommended postponing the 2021 Rugby World Cup. So, unfortunately, Gabby may have to wait longer to fulfill that dream. Oh. And Gabby finally gets a chance to tell everybody what kind of coach Rob Kane really is. It's pretty funny. Here's our conversation. Hey, Gabby. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Um, weather's finally nice here, so it's been a good week for once. What, wait, hold on. What, is, what does nice look like over there? What is, what is good weather? It's been like 50s and sunny and no rain, so it's actually feels compared to what it was. It feels really luxurious. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just get into it. I know you're you're probably itching to get out with I don't know what you do on a Friday night for a match, but uh... just cooking dinner for my roommates actually. <laughs> oh yeah, what's on the menu? I'm making my first paella without my dad. So oh. um, yeah, it's gonna be hopefully good. Um, otherwise potentially food poisoning for everybody so i guess we'll see well good luck with that <laughs> thanks uh you've had what a good week or so off um you know what have you been doing to, to keep the time you've been training obviously any, did you get out or anything any sightseeing any free time um no so we're still we're still in lockdown over here yeah. so um yeah pretty much all you can really do is go for walks um and you know like take away coffees and stuff like that which we have um, I went on a walk today with actually Rachel Johnson, who's one of my new roommates. So we we went around and did that today. Um, but otherwise, it's just been, you know, like hanging around the house. Um, we hang out on our neighborhood basketball court and mess around when we get bored. But it's not been too much, actually. <laughs> Something, I guess. But Well, speaking of yeah. the Chiefs, I mean, you guys are on a roll. You won maybe five straight, you know, some big wins over Saracens, Harlequins. You know, it looks like the team's really coming together well. Yeah, it's been, um, I think it's been a culmination point of all of our hard work for the past, you know, couple months. Um, I, I really just think it shows how much we've come together as a group from, you know, when we first started. I think we've, we always had potential and we had, you know, a few spots in games where it looked like we could create to make some really nice things happen. And I think that, you know, the results is just what happens when you we've been together for long enough to actually understand what the other person's going to do and kind of play off of them so we can like link a lot better um which has been really enjoyable to be a part of what were the goals coming into this season i mean a completely new team you know susie had certain goals for me obviously wins and you want to get to the playoffs and a final but what were some of the general goals for the club itself um i think for the club it was um it was mostly about trying to, like you said, get some results in um, and really establish ourselves in our first season as a strong um, side in the women's women's table. Um, 
I kind of got in late, so I missed a lot of, you know, the preseason readings where that was something that they really talked about. But from the vibe that I was getting, you know, Susie's desires to turn it into, and it is um, into a very high performance women's environment that can, you know, attract players and grow young England players as well mm -hmm. um, to kind of represent the Chiefs badge and, and make it um, a club that kind of has it, that stellar, stellar reputation that the boys have. So I think we've gotten off to a good start there's still a good amount of work to be done as well but um, I think that's really what the overall club goals are well right direction um, I know viewership has been really good with the extra chase feeds at least on YouTube I know that Saracens match what 125,000 viewers possibly all over social media yeah. and that's got to feel good I mean it's not just someone tuning into rugby it's tuning in to see you and the rest of them play yeah and I think it's it's what it really is, is it's giving young girls the ability to see people playing at a high level and it gives them something to um, look towards and to aspire to. Um, I know when I was growing up there, it was a lot harder to catch a woman's game. You know, it wouldn't be streamed on YouTube, but you couldn't really find it on TV. So unless you lived in an area that there was, you know, an older woman's side or even a high school side, that was pretty much all the rugby you were going to get that had women playing. So um, I think the fact that it's being streamed is really good for the next generation of women's players all across the world because it, it does give young girls role models um, and it does make the sport seem more accessible for them. Yeah. You mentioned Rachel uh, a moment ago. You know, it's good to see her and, and, and Joanna to getting into the action with the team and awesome to see Rachel getting a start tomorrow. You know, have you give them any, I don't know, words of wisdom? Because you've been there so much longer than they have. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. Um, I don't really. I'm not sure if I'm one of those people that gives words of wisdom more if I've given them a hard time. But, you know, of <laughs> course, in that loving manner that you, you do with your teammates. Yeah. Um, but I am. I think for both of them, it's it was really nice to see them come over um, and have, the, you know, get to share that experience with them. Um, and it is also nice to have that little piece of home as well, um, mm -hmm. especially because Jojo and I did play for the same club. So. Um, for them to have worked their way into the roster, I was, you know, I'm really excited for them. I've been really happy for them. And it's been nice watching them, you know, grow just with the amount of practice and rugby time that we get. It's something that is almost like a luxury for us right now, because usually you got, you have to go to work full time and you don't get to spend this much time playing. So I think it's really benefited all of us. And I'm glad that they got to come over and experience it with us. So you personally um, were just named, uh, you know, extra player of the month. I mean, awesome. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Did you get anything special for a watch, uh, free rent, a pat in the back, <laughs> anything like that? <laughs> no, nothing like that. Just um, just that headshot put up and shared yeah. over social media, um, which is flattering because it is one of my better headshots that I've taken. I don't tend to take good ones. <laughs> um, so, no, nothing crazy, but it was, um, you know, it's great to, to get that mentioned just because there are so many talented players on the team. Um, so, it's always nice to get a little bit of, of you know, a shout out. But um, I think, you know, I was nominated against Ebony, and I think that she's also had a great month in January, and I would debatably um, would have given it to her. So it could go either way in any month and is really how I see it. How are you um, – or how was the transition from fly app to center? I'm assuming you played center before, right? This is yeah, I played first center – yeah, I played center a little bit in college. Um and then I played my first year when I moved to Denver, I played center as well. So um, not not a new position. Uh, it's not really, I don't think it's that hard of a transition to go from 10 to 12 um, mm -hmm. because you actually take moving that position out, you get a little bit more time to see and scan things. If anything, it's just really changed kind of the communication that I'm feeding in because it's less, you know, organize it like you are organizing, but it's more of like where you see the space and you're kind of asking for the ball to come to you when you do see that space outside of you or in front of you. So just a little bit of a change in, you know, what I'm looking for and what cues I'm trying to pick up. Um, but otherwise, I've really enjoyed it and I um, have been really enjoying playing outside of Taylor as well. Are you in? So I, I played center in college as many years ago and I wasn't inside. Um, and I was much bigger than the other other centers at that point. So oftentimes they, they just have me crashing back towards the forwards, which I'm like, well, just make me a Ford. <laughs> but um, I did have some communication with my number 10. And, and I, I oftentimes I've seen myself, I was like a 10 and a half. You know, we would talk to each other mm -hmm. quite a bit. Do you have that kind of, same kind of communication with your number 10 as well? 
Yeah, yeah, I think Taylor and I definitely have a lot of communication coming between the two of us. Um, And I try to, I think since I do play 10, I kind of understand the time crunch that she's under and all the things that she has going on in front of her. So I try to give her information based on, you know, where the ball should be going and where the space is. Because again, you tend to laser in on the four or five defenders in front of you and you can miss easier spaces outside. So um, yeah, I, I just really try to help her out when possible and give her any information so that she can make a good decision on where she wants to put the ball. Now your kicking game has been uh, a big part of this team this year. Uh, well, this whole time with Exeter, you know, 41 points, I think fifth in the league right now. How much have you been working on your kicking game or have you been working on it more than usual? What's going into your prep as far as your kicking game goes? Yeah, so we have, I probably do, I do one big kicking session a week um, with, we have Gareth Steenson who just retired from the Exeter Chiefs men's team last year. So he's comes in and does kicking sessions usually on a Monday or a Tuesday with us. So we'll do like a, you know, backs kicking session where mostly kicking from hand and grubbers. And then we'll do um, a little bit individual with like off the tee for me. Um, and then I just try to get in a certain amount of strikes per day. So it's not necessarily, you know, going out and taking a bunch of shots at goal. It's more of like just focusing on either my, my contact or, you know, the, my approach and my follow through sort of thing. So I usually go between, um, anywhere from seven, which I know is an odd number, but seven to 15 a day just to get those in. And it's pretty low impact on my body. So it it just kind of keeps me mentally refreshed. Um, and then on a Saturday before a game, I do do a bit of a warmer, longer warm up, um, just so that I can make sure that I'm really connecting with it. But yeah, so it's, it's a lot more like little small sessions than it is big, big kicking sessions. So I've asked uh, AJ McGinty this um, and Will Hooley. Uh, when you are standing there in a match and the ball's on the tee, you're lining up your shot. What is going through your mind? What is the important part of making your kick at that point? You know, obviously you're not thinking about your paella. You're going to be cooking that night, let's yeah. say. You're, yeah. you're mentally seeing that ball go through the post. And can you explain that process? Yeah, so um, for me – kind of like the the routine I've developed is um, it, it kind of mirrors my visual visualization why is that such a hard word to say um, with uh, my like breathing so you know because obviously I've been running so it kind of I tie the two together so that I'm like that like calming myself down and, and also using it to focus in so usually um, I'll look obviously at the like the base point of the ball and then draw the line up to the top of the post um, and I sync like my eye transition with like my exchange of breath just to, you know, tie those two together and give myself a physical cue because um, it's not like it's something new. And then I'm picturing the ball coming um, through the, usually the center of the post, sometimes like the center slightly to the right, um, but like up towards the top of the post, so, you know, where I, where I'd ideally have it hit. Um, and then on the exhale, I just like switch my focus back to the ball and then I don't look at the post again because hmm. um, for me, one of the more important parts is just making sure that I'm really hitting solidly through the ball and not coming away because if I hit solid, it will go in a straight line about where I want it to go. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I think about much, honestly. I think it's really just like I'm, I'm just so process driven in it that if, if it's a good kick, I probably wasn't thinking about anything other than just like where that ball was going and then just staring at the ball on the tee, making sure that I'm really hitting through the spot that I want to hit. So it's, it's mostly, uh, you're breathing at that point, especially in a match, right? So yeah, I think, yeah. I think even like shooters do the same thing. It's all in the breath before they pull the trigger. I'm not a shooter, but, um, but that's, yeah, especially in a match and late in a match, let's say, um, someone scores in the corner and, and are you ever thinking get towards the middle come on get towards the middle a little more <laughs> Please, <laughs> no um i definitely used to do that um i don't really yeah. think about it anymore um yeah no yeah it doesn't doesn't usually cross my mind unless like maybe if it was like really windy or something and i like knew like what like if the wind was coming like left to right and i knew the one corner was going to be terrible i'd be like god damn it but yeah. that that hasn't happened in a while so <laughs> <laughs> So lately, uh, there's been some big news out of the RFU about the Premier 15s. One, the latest one's been about the the amount of foreign players per club. Um, and then the other one is the salary increases. So one's good, 
Obviously, salary cap increase is excellent for the teams. But the limiting the number of foreign players, I think either it's on the pitch at once or in the club. What is your opinion on that? Have you had time to think about that much? Because with your club, you'd be devastated. I mean, like tomorrow's match, yeah. I think I counted like ha- at least half the team are Canadian and USA internationals. Yeah, I haven't really um, given it much thought um, just because, you know, I tend to, I like to just go day to day. So just, you know, focus today is actually just going to be on my recovery and then tomorrow it'll be on the game sort of thing. So it's not mm-hmm. something that I've put a ton of thought into, um, but it is something obviously that will will impact going forward next year um, and the way that clubs sign players. So it is obviously something that will impact me, but I can't say that I've given it um, a ton of thought as of yet. Yeah. I mean, hopefully the, you know, WPL, the the leagues in America, obviously hopefully be going by next year, but um, the standard of play rising every year. So it helps, you know, but the level of play in the premier 15s is really unmatched in any other other women's league in the world, or at least in Northern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So, I get what RFU is doing. You know, they want their English club, English side, to be as good as possible, and they want more and more of those players in. But right now, I mean, wouldn't you think that it would be great or maybe not good for the global game, the women's global game right now, to kind of restrict who plays at the highest level? Yeah, I can kind of, I can see both sides of it. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, it's one of those things that, I can see the RFU side because, you know, the only way their their standard of play within their national team will keep growing is if they continue to develop their young players. And that makes sense. You need to make sure that you invest in your next generation. Um, so that makes sense to me. Um, but it also is, as somebody who is not English, it is, you know, a, a thought point of, well, it is the only league that is so this well supported in yeah. the women's game, but also that's not necessarily, I mean, that's more of good on them, less like, you know, it's their role to help make that for everyone, if that makes sense. So I don't really have, again, something I'd like. I I can see both sides on it, but I don't have a particularly strong opinion on either way, um, just because it, it just, it does at some point make sense in both senses. So let's talk USA rugby right now. Okay. So Congratulations on making the World Cup uh, a performance squad. You know, thank you. What would it mean to you to be able to pull on a USA jersey in a World Cup match? Yeah, for me, um, it's definitely been one of my goals and aspirations to represent the U.S. at a World Cup. So it would be fulfilling a dream of mine, and it would also feel like. Um, you know, that everything that I've done has, has made sense and kind of culminated to that point. Um, but at the same time, thinking that way, I don't want to not enjoy the journey that rugby and, you know, my aspirations of a World Cup have taken me on because it has taken me to some, to some great places. And it's also introduced me to a lot of my closest friends. So, um, yeah, for me, it would be it'd be a dream come true. But also the, the journey has been better than expected so um, I can honestly say I'm I'm happy to be at the point I am and to be considered in selection. But even if I don't make it, I'm obviously still going to be rooting for the girls because they everybody else has given up just as much, if not more, than me. Yeah. Are you familiar with the um, the history of the Women's World Cup and how well USA has done early on? Yeah, I know we won the first one. Right. And I, I think we went to the finals the next two times after that, but... It seems like we've dropped off a bit, or maybe not. We've dropped off, but the rest of the world started catching up. You know. Yeah. Uh, have you thought about it all? I know you're concentrating on on extra right now, but have you thought at all much? Like, what will it take for USA women to to get back up to where they once were? Maybe even the top four or or the finalists again. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it gets we as a country get better every year because people have been playing from younger ages. So, mm. you know, I think our rugby IQ as a team um, and as a nation has gotten better because it is more accessible for people and we are able to get talent from, you know, more teams and more places. So I don't think that um, our, our ability to compete on the world stage has anything to do with that. I just think it's more of a, an issue of how large our country is. You know, it's one of the great things and one of the hard things. It means we have a ton of teams and areas that we could get 
talented players from, but it does also mean that it is harder for us to train and play together, which um, this is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. So it's just that team cohesion and the familiarity of, you know, our, what our tactics and what we want to do together. That's really the the hard point for us. But um, I do think it is something that in the coming years um, it's, we can overcome and we can get back to the stage that we were. But I think even with, you know, the, the low amount of international competitions that we do play leading into a World Cup, I would say we do really well as a squad and consistently have. Do you um, do you foresee you'll be able to join the, the team um, for at least their first week-long training coming up this spring, I think it is, or late spring? Are you going to be able to get away from that? Um, I, we will l- likely not be there for the first um, block that they have. So um, for us, it's a lot about they do, they're doing a lot of um, meetings online and, you know, that sort of thing. So that's the way that we're mostly engaging. And then it's kind of on us to send in, you know, skill videos. Um, and then the, the coaches are watching our game film. So um, unfortunately, just with COVID and the fact that our season got pushed back a little bit because of that two-week break, um, we will likely not make the first training block. But the hope is that um, we would be invited to the second portion. But you're in a, a unique um, situation where you're playing every week uh, and the others as well. And though, so the rest of the, of the pool, though, they're not, you know, um, any word on how they're training or anything that Rob has put into uh, into work for them to train on their own? Do you know? Yeah. So they um, I know there's a good portion of the girls that have already, you know, move towards the Denver area. So there's mm. a, a, a decent amount of them there training, getting the lifts and conditioning in, and then also getting their um, skill blocks in. So um, that has been, I think, you know, that plus that first assembly that they did in the fall, I think has been really beneficial for everyone just to get their, you know, contact hours with Rob up as well as the, you know, skill-based programming. They got to do about like s- seven weeks of individual skills, which, um, you know, is something that I don't think we've been able to do before. And it's not really something that you get to focus on when you get into a large team camp. So I think that that's been really, really helpful for um, everybody back home. And I think it's going to, you know, show well once we get back into playing games. And then most of now until that first assembly that they get into is going to be, you know, they have a strength and conditioning block. They have a, um, a, like a skill-based requirement, but it changes per person. So everyone has their own contact coach that they, you know, are in contact with and is kind of helping them advise on, you know, what skills they should be doing and everyone's submitting skill videos as well so that you can get the feedback on um, those little technical skills. So um, we're, we all still end up on the same page when we get back together. So speaking of Rob, um, here's a good chance for you now. He, you heard how he feels about your kicking game and about how you're playing. Uh, How is he as a coach? (laughs) How is he as a coach? He is, hmm, it's a tough question, obviously. Um, Rob doesn't, he's not very direct. He doesn't answer a lot of questions. So he, um, he (laughs) kind of, you know, throws things back at you. So if you ever, you know, ask him, you know, like, oh, like I did this is that right? He, he would be immediately like, what do you think? And it sort of feels like he's asking us to coach ourselves, which (laughs) is either a, a really good way of delegating or just like be his way of saying he doesn't know. Um, but I personally haven't been able to get to the bottom of which one it is. So he's either really good at getting us to, um, expand our minds to get to the same place that he is, or he's really good at us getting us to answer the questions because he doesn't know. But again, with like the accent and everything about him, it's just hard to tell because he, you know, he is English. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll say about Rob. <laughs> Sorry, that's fun. Uh, all right. And last thing, um, and this is extremely important, obviously, uh, your Instagram handle, Gab can't do anything. What is that mm-hmm. about? Well, I'm glad you asked actually. Um, I, so you know how you can custom make Nike shoes? Yep. Okay. So when I was in seventh grade, um, that was when Nike shocks were a thing, you know, those really ugly shoes with the, like, looks like coils on the back, but they don't actually do anything. <laughs> yeah. So I got a pair of those. They were like hot pink, bright blue. Um, they're hideous, 
but I like customized them. So then I was like, oh, I'll put my name on them. I'm going to be so, so, so cool. The left shoe said Gab. So, cause I was reading it obviously. And then I tried to put Cantorna on the right shoe, but I didn't realize that they cut it off after five. <laughs> so it ended up with Gab Cant. And then everyone at school made fun of me for that. Um, so once I finally got around to making an Instagram, I just decided to lean into it um, and, and take that as my Instagram handle. And I just never changed it. That's awesome. That's a great story. Yeah. You, you need yeah. to start coming out with your own line of shoes now. Come on, you can get those. <laughs> yeah. If I follow my old my old color scheme, though, they'll be they'll be tough to look at. You'll have to go like find a Miami team or something to play for with that color scheme. But... Yeah, yeah. Somewhere warm weather. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Gabby, thank you so much for for joining me today. I really appreciate you filming me in on uh, what's been going on this season. Uh, you know, good luck the remainder of the season, and then good luck with the USA camp and the World Cup coming up. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.